to uh, welcome our Zoom participants. We have some folks that are attending virtually today as well. So for those folks, if you have questions, you can put them into the Q&A portion of the Zoom. And uh, Lisa, who is sitting over there, will let us know if those questions come up. So I believe we uh, also have a couple of folks that may be able to answer questions, so they may uh, choose to unmute at some point. Privilege to welcome you all here. And what I think is so wonderful about being in this building is this building is a partnership, right? This is a building that houses the brand new Lansing Tech High School. It houses our technology wing. It houses our print shop. But it also houses this amazing community center. And it houses the police department. And what a great symbol, Lansing, that in one building under the same roof, you can have nonprofits that also use space here. There are church groups, there are social organizations, the school district, the police department, the city. What an incredibly emblematic symbol for what we're doing today. Because what Advanced Peace is, and what the great work that Paul and his team is doing, as well as everybody in this room, is to say that we as a community can help support everyone here. And what's so amazing about what Advanced Peace is doing is that they are acknowledging that there is talent in this city. This is not about an organization that comes in and says, we know better. This is about incredible work that people are doing in the community with the folks that love this community and care about this community. And you know, having been from New York, having done a lot of violence interruption work and just anti-gun violence work, the fact that I can come in and see this in Lansing with this, every seat is filled, standing room only. What does that say? It says the people of Lansing love Lansing. The people of Lansing want Lansing to be even better than it is. And there's incredible people on this dais that are going to tell you more about the great work that's happening with Advanced Peace. I want to certainly thank the mayor for helping to leverage all of the resources that he has at his disposal to make this happen. And again, you know, all credit to Paul and the Advanced Peace team for doing this. So nobody is here to hear me speak, so I just want to say thank you to everybody for being here. And we look forward to this incredible partnership between everybody, the school district, the city, the police department, Advanced Peace, nonprofits, you name it. You know, the old adage of it takes a village is, is for real. And so with that, thank you so much for having me. Thank you for being in our building. And thank you for the great work that you're doing for the Lansing. Again, I want to thank everybody for being here. My name is Kate Snyder, and I help support MDHI with its communications efforts and have had the opportunity to help support Advanced Peace Lansing and the team. Um, since really we started trying to help people understand what Advanced Peace is and where it's going. Uh, so today I'm going to serve as your moderator. So I'm simply here to help manage questions and uh, move us through our amazing panel that is going to share not only about some phenomenal expansion plans for Advanced Peace moving into later this year in 2024, but also the some recent statistics and data surrounding what's happening in our community as it relates to gun violence. So, uh, first I get to introduce our awesome panel, and I am very pleased <laughs> to welcome Mayor Andy Shore, who is Mayor of the City of Lansing, one of the key partners in the Advanced Peace Lansing Initiative. Uh, Dr. Paul Elam is the Chief Strategy Officer at MPHI, as well as the Strategy Manager of Advanced Peace Lansing, and really one of the driving forces behind it. Um, Dr. Adenike Shoyinka, Chief Medical Health Officer, I practice, uh, the Chief <laughs> Medical <laughs> Health Officer at the Hingham County Health Department. Um, the, one of the other key partners in the initiative is Ingham County, and we thank our county commissioners and team members that are here today. And then, of course, Delisa Fontaine, the director of the Department of Neighborhoods, Arts, and Citizen Engagement with the City of Lansing. And she has been a member of the Advanced Peace Lansing team and really helping represent neighborhoods and support on the city side um, for as long as... as I've been talking with y'all, so very excited to have her here for the panel. We also have a couple of extra folks who are going to join us for our Q&A, 
so uh, Jeffrey Brown, an at-large member of our Lansing City Council, as well as you already got a chance to meet our Lansing School District Superintendent. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to our first panelist. So, Mayor Shore. Thank you. Um, well, I appreciate it. Uh, I'm, I'm really excited to be here uh, a year in. Uh, this is something that we worked so hard to, to get set up. We spent so many um, months just talking about the need for uh, violence interruption, the need to, to get to the kids before to get to the people, but to get to the kids before uh, things get bad. So we know that, uh, well first let me thank everybody sitting at the table over here on my left. Uh, our violence interrupters, our peacekeepers, our fellow And uh, they're there at you know one in the morning, two in the morning, all hours of the day. Whenever something happens, they're the ones who jump in and uh, get it done. So everything we talk about, they're the ones who are action. So I appreciate you all. Um, and thank you, and you deserve that applause and then some. Oh, like everywhere else in the U.S., Lansing has seen a rise in gun violence since the pandemic. We saw it uh, when things shut down. We saw numbers go up. Uh, and we knew we had to, to jump in and, and, and do something. How do we try and prevent on the front end rather than just policing on the back end and, and uh, putting people in jail and, and you know, the things that we want to avoid? That, that there were no easy or simple solutions, but Advanced Peace, uh, we were approached by Advanced Peace. We worked with uh, uh, Linda Vale. We worked with uh, Devon Bogan. We worked with several others. Um, and we, we said, this is going to work. Um, we took a leap of faith. Uh, with evidence knowing that it had worked up in California and in other areas. And now, after a year, we know this is working. Um, and that's really exciting. Um, we know that in, in the first year, that gun violence, that, that fatal homicides in Lansing are down 65%. 65%. Um, now, that doesn't, that doesn't change the fact that when something happens, it's a tragedy and it's awful, and we want it to be zero. But 65% means that um, that when the advanced peace team gets in, they're being affected. Um, when, uh, and I mentioned this in my state of the city, when we went, uh, I think about three months without a, without a homicide, um, which was incredible. And then when, when, the, when the awful happened and we had a homicide, our advanced peace team jumped into action. They got in, they went in, they made sure there was no retaliation, they talked to all the parties. They did exactly what they had been doing and we knew they could do, and we didn't see any kind of retaliation. We didn't see this or that. We didn't see that um, because of the, the work of our advanced peace team. Um, we know that incidents with evidence of shots being fired are down. We know that calls to 911 or police about shots fired are down. That's all good stuff. Um, but we don't call it victory and walk away. Um, we know there's, there's a lot more work to do. Um, so uh, why is this important? We, Let's start with how do we know this has been successful. We, we um, targeted, we looked at um, Southwest Lansing. And again, when you look at the map, and Paul's going to get into this, this is where we started in Southwest. And we saw incredible um, success there. Um, but we need to do more. Uh, Lansing is investing. Lansing, we put in uh, $240,000 in our 2022 budget. We put in $300,000 in our current year budget. Uh, and uh, with the leadership of Delisa Fontaine, she hates when I call her out, but I'm going to do it anyway. Through the leadership of Delisa Fontaine, we've decided we, you know, we, we had gun violence dollars that we had through our, our budget, uh, and we're going to repurpose that also to, um, to, instead of kind of doing a shotgun approach, to, to, to focus that and make sure that we're putting dollars into, into advanced peace to help to spread. So Lansing is proud to be one of the major funders of the initiative. Um, we're going to keep looking for sources of funding. I have talked to State Senator Sarah Anthony, uh, a, a Southsider right here. I went to, went to Everett High School along with my kids, which I'm proud of. Uh, go Vikings. Um, sorry for the sex in Eastern grads. Uh, I, always get, I always get in trouble when I do that. But, um, but we've talked about it. She is, she's a partner and, and helping us out. She's the appropriations chair, which we're proud of. You know, I've talked to, to many of our, our legislators. We've, I've talked to our Congresswoman, Alyssa Slotkin, who is very interested in helping out um, and as you'll hear, you know, has, has helped to provide dollars. Um, but they all know the continued investment will keep will keep the positive going and expand the impact into other neighborhoods in Lansing, which is huge. Um, but we also know, as I mentioned, that there are areas of the city where um, Advanced Peace is not is not actively working, and we'd like to see them actively working. We'd like to see the success of Southwest Lansing throughout our city. Um, so 
we're really excited um, to see the expansion. Um, you know, one metric that, that I mentioned all these positive metrics, one metric I'm not thrilled about is that, um, that non-fatal shootings are up. Um, we have seen an increase, not much, about 6-7%. We've seen an increase in non-fatal shootings, which means there are more uh, youth or people out there with guns that are, are using those guns. Um, if it's non-fatal, you know, it's non-fatal, but they still have those guns or using those guns. So we need advanced piece to get in and to explain to those folks why that is the wrong thing to do. We need the, the violence interrupters, we need the fellows, and we need them throughout the city of Lansing. Um, we know advanced peace is just one piece of the pie. This is not, you know, this is not going to solve all the ills of the world. Uh, I wish they would. Um, I can trust Paul on that and trust uh, Dr. Kennedy on that, but um, it's a partnership. You know, we know uh, Mikey McKissick and Mikey23 is, is working. We know our Lansing Parks and Recs are providing things for kids to do so they're not going down the, the, wrong, um, the wrong path. We just opened an eSports room um, for, for many of our youth. Um, we know there are churches and other faith-based organizations that are doing so much work, whether it's mentoring or, or helping out with our kids. We know there are, are nonprofit programs working throughout our city. Um, so we can only be successful when all of these are successful. We'll continue to support those. Um, but I'm tremendously excited for the, the incredible progress that Advance Peace has made in year one. Um, I'm excited that we're going to be able to expand this. I'm excited that others recognize this and are jumping in, especially with funding. Um, so I, I'm, I'm optimistic. Um, you know, again, we're, we're never gonna, we're never going to, to be able to, um, to be perfect. But we can put our energy and our resources into making sure that, that our youth, that our citizens, um, have all the tools in their toolbox to be successful. Uh, and that's what advanced peace does. It advances peace in our community. So um, I want to thank again our fellows. I want to thank everybody in this panel because everybody here has done the work. Uh, Dr. Kennedy, Dr. Elam, um, and everybody who, who really prioritized this to make a difference. Thank you. Thank you. And now you get to hear a little bit more about what has been accomplished over the past year and where we're going next. So, Paul Elam. Thank you, Kate, and uh, thanks to Kate and, and her entire team at Piper and Gold for uh, pulling this together for a second annual uh, public convening. Let, let's give her a hand. Public-private partnership, as, as the superintendent said here, uh, with our mayor and um, with, with Nike uh, representing the county and, and Delisa to really talk about uh, the investments that this city and county have made to reduce gun violence. Um, we really appreciate uh, the commitment uh, to this work, and we made a uh, intentional commitment to be very transparent in this work. And so every year you will hear from us in terms of what's happening with Advanced Peace. Uh, some of our successes, as the mayor began to share, are some of the concerns that we continue to have. And uh, we want to make sure that you have an opportunity to access questions uh, about the work that we're actually doing. Um, I also want to thank every elected official that's here online that has supported us. Um, this truly does not take place across the country uh, the way we see it here in Lansing. Every time we picked up the phone, made a call, uh, folks have said, yes, we will support Advanced Peace. We want to do what's right. Uh, in our community to reduce gun violence, uh, particularly cyclical and retaliatory gun violence. Um, uh, Charles and Marlon and I were just at a, a national convening, which we do every two months, and they can attest that uh, uh, every community is not supportive of advanced peace. And, and so we thank uh, you all for being a part of the planning process. Now we're in the implementation process, and we're uh, making great strides uh, to address uh, this concern that we have. Um, I have at least 15 MPHI colleagues in the room. <laughs> Count them. Uh, our CEO is here. Uh, many staff are here. And, and we're here because we know that gun violence is a threat to public health. We are a Michigan based, nationally engaged, nonprofit public health institute. And we're doing our part uh, to address gun violence in, in the city of Lansing. And so uh, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Nikkei, for, for trusting MPHI uh, to be a partner with you in this work. And so as Kate mentioned, I've got a couple things I want to share. Um, I'm also a, a minister, y'all, so if I go along, uh, give me, uh, I'll tell you my first closing and then the second closing, all right? So she's giving me some, some notes here. But we really want to start out by letting you know why uh, we're doing Advanced Peace. As the mayor said, uh, about three years ago, we started dialogue in this community. Uh, we really started uh, in the village Lansing. Uh, we thought the village was going to be a great partner. 
uh, to do this work. They still partner with us, but uh, in, in some way, MPHI was called upon to do this work. And what uh, remains in my mind is when we talk, talked about these conversations, we were told there were about 30 to 35 individuals in our community who were carrying weapons and shooting folks engaged in what we call cyclical or retaliatory gun violence. Every day they wake up, they have access to weapons, and they are uh, trying to evade someone who is trying to murder them, or they're trying to engage someone before they engage them to, to deal uh, with beasts that we have in the street. Uh, today, I uh, believe that that number has increased to 80 to 85, uh, based on information that we're getting from multiple sources throughout our community. Uh, the profile uh, ranges. We have youth as early as uh, young as 10 years old who have access to weapons, who are uh, brandishing those weapons in social media. Uh, we have prosecuted youth as uh, young as 13 years of age, and, and many of them uh, live right here in our community. And, and so we take this very serious, and we're trying to get ahead of this issue be before it becomes uh, 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 too large of a problem for us to deal with. And so. Um, Advanced Peace is one of three nationally evidence-based programs that we believe uh, has demonstrated the effectiveness in dealing with matters like this. Uh, Cure Violence uh, is another uh, program, and Cease Fire is another program. Uh, we chose to uh, support Advanced Peace in the strategy. Uh, Devon Bogan, I believe, is online uh, watching. He's actually a resident of Lansing, and uh, we're happy to be partnering with Advanced Peace na uh, nationally uh, to invest back into the community where he uh, grew up at. And so, as the mayor mentioned, we've had a, a goal of reducing gun violence within our community. Our goal is 40% over three years. And we've already uh, addressed that in terms of reducing uh, fatal gun violence by 65%. And, and so, based on that success, uh, we are committed today to talk about an expansion uh, that we'd like to partner on. We've already raised funds to embark upon that journey really wanted to update the community on our progress related to that. And so uh, initially, uh, the city and the county invested upwards of a million dollars over three years to help us launch this initiative. Uh, M MPHI has received close to a million dollars uh, throughout um, this, this journey, and we have also raised another $3 million uh, to date from federal resources uh, to support this expansion that we're going to talk about today. And so, uh, to date, we have about $4.1 million uh, to serve this community by uh, implementing Advanced Peace uh, throughout the city. And we'll talk a little bit more about uh, those resources in a second. The second thing I wanted to share with you is um, we have done a significant amount of work in year one uh, to build the capacity of this community to do this work. Um, as many of you know about grants, typically people write great, great grant proposals, but when it comes to implementing those proposals, uh, there might be some struggles with that. And so uh, we have done, um, if I could say, a, a great job. Right next to you, uh, we have our entire team uh, that, that's uh, committed to this work that the mayor uh, shared. And I really want to introduce them to you. Marshall is in the back room. Just stand up, Dr. Dr. Marshall. of our Center for Racial and Social Justice. Advanced Peace sits within that center, and Dr. Marshall's charge and commitment is to address uh, the institutional issues that are occurring within our communities by partnering uh, with the governmental and, and philanthropic community to address the root causes of many of the ills that we're actually dealing with. And so as the mayor mentioned, uh, we don't just want to deal with the behaviors. We want to uh, get upstream and identify some of those root causes. And so we're glad that Dr. Marshall is on board and, and leading this effort. Uh, right after Dr. Marshall, we have uh, Charles uh, Richardson. Please stand up, Charles. He is our new program manager. And so over the next year, you'll begin to see me fade to black, and Charles will be stepping up uh, to actually lead this initiative. Charles is a native of, of Lansing, Michigan himself, and so you got questions today after the uh, uh, this presentation, please go to Charles and talk to Charles. <laughs> uh, he has the grace to do this work, and, and uh, is, we're very much appreciative of his leadership in leading this work. Next, we have uh, Marlon Beard, who's our field coordinator. Stand up, Marlon. Marlon, I'm very to 
Carlson is responsible for coordinating uh, the day-to-day -day street outreach here in our community and making sure that our neighborhood change agents and peacekeepers are responding uh, to matters related to cyclical and uh, retaliatory gun violence. And so uh, we appreciate Marlon's leadership in, in working with the team daily. Next we have Aaron Blankenberg, who's our lead neighborhood change agent. go to work and so uh, Aaron has uh, uh, been with us for a year uh, uh, Marlon has been with us for a year as well and so he is our lead NCA what does that mean uh, he's taken the lead uh, to respond uh, to gun violence and, and he's actually uh, the mentor and model for what we want our NCAs to be here in Lansing and so as we build our team which we'll talk about in a minute uh, we want AV to be an example in the community uh, to, to these young men and women who might be joining our team uh, and getting trained to do this work out in the community. So, so thank you, A.B. And then we have um, DeAndre McFadden. Come on, stand up, DeAndre. DeAndre is our first peacekeeper. Um, a peacekeeper works with our neighborhood change agents uh, to support the street outreach work, and he is the first uh, individual to be promoted from a peacekeeper to actually a neighborhood change agent based on his work. This is our initial team. Um, we also have um, uh, Leticia Richardson, who is our administrative support specialist. Where's Leticia? There she is. We can't do this work without support. And so while, while they pay attention to what's going on in the community, uh, we have red tape. We've got uh, reports to turn in uh, to the federal government, to the state government, et cetera. And uh, Leticia is very helpful. Uh, with that work. I just saw uh, William Carthen uh, come in. Come on and stand up, William. He's our peacekeeper as well. And so this is evidence that we have begun to build the capacity uh, of our team. And that's the team that's been uh, established during the first year. We'll talk about how we're going to expand that team over, over the next year. That team right there is responsible for assisting 15 fellows in our Peacemaker Fellowship. Um, it is an 18-month fellowship where we engage uh, individuals who are at the center of cyclical and retaliatory gun violence um, in 13 evidence-based practices. I don't have time to talk about all of those. They're on the website, www.advancedpeacelansing.org. Did I get that right? Lansingingham. Lansingingham.org. Thank you, Kate. Uh, please visit that website. Uh, there's a QR code on your handout if you just scan uh, the QR code. Um, it, that website will pop up on your mobile device. You can learn more about that strategy. But we have engaged our first uh, Peacemaker Fellowship, and our team is engaging those individuals on a daily basis to make sure that they cease and desist uh, from this behavior called cyclical retaliatory gun violence. Um, Twelve of those young men are doing very well, if you want to know. Uh, two of them were reincarcerated for behaviors uh, that they engaged in prior. Uh, to joining our Peacemaker Fellowship. Sometimes the justice system moves a little slow, and, and so um, uh, they're dealing with that matter now. And one of our uh, fellows has been incarcerated and is being uh, prosecuted uh, for another violent offense. Uh, the other 12 are fully engaged. They show up every week. Uh, they show up to our life skills classes. Our NCAs connect with them daily. Uh, they're listening. Uh, they're looking for ways uh, to get out of this behavior. They want jobs. Uh, they want to be in school. Uh, they want to raise their families uh, if they have, uh, raise their children if they have children. They want to be a part of uh, 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 pro-social networks and things of that nature. And so we're doing our best to use the resources that you gave us uh, to help them make that, that change. And this coming year, based on the numbers that we have received, we want to expand this fellowship to 60 uh, fellows. We have received the funds to actually do that, and so at this moment, uh, we are challenging our team to identify the next group of individuals so we can start the second fellowship in April of 2024. Uh, we will complete the first 18-month fellowship in March of 2024, and then we will start the next fellowship uh, with the next group of individuals that, that we have identified. Uh, what have these young men and women actually been doing? Well, uh, we actually have a year one evaluation from the University of Berkeley. 